Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Cassandra Wallace. We have some exciting news to share with you. Reporters will hear first from our guests and then be given an opportunity to ask questions. If you would like to ask a question, please leave those questions in the chat and we will take those at the end. To begin, I would like to introduce our speakers. With us today, we have Kathy Jacobson, President and CEO of Freighter Health, Dr. Imran Andrabi, President and CEO of ThetaCare, Dr. John Raymond, President and CEO of the Medical College of Wisconsin. Jim Kotek, Chair of the ThetaCare Board of Trustees and retired President and CEO of Menasha Corporation. And Jackie Frederick, Chair of the Freighter Health Board of Directors and retired President and CEO of Versity and the Blood Center of Wisconsin. At this time, I would like to turn it over to Kathy Jacobson, President and CEO of Freighter Health. Great, thank you, Cass. And thank you, everybody, today for joining us for what we believe is just a truly exciting um, announcement today. For some time, the Wisconsin-based leaders of both Freighter Health and ThetaCare have been asking ourselves a question about how we can make a positive and long-lasting impact on healthcare and healthcare delivery for the people who live here right here in Wisconsin. That's exactly right, Kathy. And really important question where we are trying to reinvent healthcare in the state of Wisconsin. And these two organizations that have long-standing roots in our communities in Wisconsin know each other well. We recently uh, came together and uh, announced a relationship where we, with the Medical College of Wisconsin, uh, moved into quaternary care partnership with Freighted Health and MCW. And then we also developed these micro campuses of the future in Fond du Lac and and Oshkosh, and we have a greater opportunity to have impact here today. We've been very fortunate in the Fox Valley to have physicians and providers who are really dedicated to community health, and we are excited about the possibilities that we have with Freighter and Medical College of Wisconsin with academic health and academic medicine. So here we are trying to make a greater impact together. So we're here today to announce a really exciting announcement that Freighter Health and ThetaCare have signed a letter of intent to bring our organizations together and combine them to create a new healthcare system. And we're really excited about what we plan to do together. First and foremost, we want to be, play a part in making the lives of the people of Wisconsin better. Uh, we will be Wisconsin-based and we will be led by people who work and live right here in Wisconsin. We believe that we will be able to deliver value and innovative solutions to address the healthcare needs of our state, and especially by addressing healthcare disparities and health inequities with a real continuing commitment to rural, suburban, and urban health in the areas that we serve. We plan to honor and enhance the legacies that both of us bring with shared clinical excellence and a commitment to our community. And we really look forward to working with our partners at the Medical College of Wisconsin and expanding that partnership. So as we move forward, I think it's important that you hear from both Imran and I about our planned leadership transition. So when the organizations come together, I will assume the role of CEO and Dr. Andrabi will become the president of our combined organization. After a six month transition, I will retire and Dr. Andrabi will take over as the CEO and president. We have both de developed a deep mutual respect for each other over the last 18 months plus that we've been working together. And we have a shared vision for what this partnership can do and about improving healthcare in the state of Wisconsin. Well, I am super honored uh, to be asked to be part of this transition and really follow the incredible legacy and work that, Kathy, you have done at Freighter Health uh, for the excellence that it has been able to achieve. I'm also very honored to be a leader at ThetaCare, and so bringing these two organizations to combine and truly take our care to a next level for the people that we are so privileged to serve. With that, I'd like to... Um, shifted over to Dr. John Raymond, uh, who is the President and CEO of the Medical College of Wisconsin, uh, to say a few words. Thank you, Dr. Andrabi and Kathy. Um, we're just so honored to be here today. And uh, really, this is, I think, for the people of Wisconsin, an incredible event. MCW has been honored to serve the people of Wisconsin by providing high quality health care 
for 130 years. We've also had the privilege of having deep ties to both Prater Health and Theta Care for decades. And we have a true appreciation for their commitment to quality and to innovation. This is really good news for Wisconsin and the people of Wisconsin and the region. As Imran said, our hope is that the partnership will enable the Medical College of Wisconsin in partnership with these two great healthcare organizations to further advance high quality health care to more people in Wisconsin to accelerate life changing discoveries, educate more health care providers for Wisconsin, and to achieve health equity for all. Those are unique features of academic medicine, which combine teaching hospitals with medical schools and health science universities to deliver unique care to the people of the region. Academic health science centers are uh, unique places where scientists, learners, providers, and leaders work together hand in hand with the community to solve the toughest challenges in society today. And only 5% of US hospitals are part of an academic health system. We're pleased to welcome Dr. Andrabi, an amazing leader who understands and values all of the missions of academic medicine and sees the unique opportunities ahead of us. And to thank Kathy Jacobson for more than 12 years of partnership and resolute high quality leadership. As Wisconsin's largest private research university, the Medical College of Wisconsin is both grateful and highly encouraged by this partnership, which will enable all of us working together to impact research from early discoveries to clinical trials and to population health. And we're committed to being strong allies to these two outstanding health systems as they come closer together and merge into one entity. So again, I want to express my gratitude to the leadership of Prater Health and to Theta Care and my great hopes for the future. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to Jim Kotek, Chair of the Theta Care Board of Trustees and retired president and CEO of the Menasha Corporation. Jim. Thank you, Dr. Raymonds. You know, Wisconsin roots run deep for both Freightert and Theta Care, and it's important for us to keep it that way. As two longstanding Wisconsin based healthcare organizations, we feel a deep sense of responsibility to come together to build a better future for the communities in which we work and live. The process of bringing our organizations together has been guided by and will continue to be guided by a set of principles, four principles specifically, and I'd like to just touch on each of them with you. First, a principle of trust and transparency. We're committed to reliability, to ethics, and to mutual respect. Second, a principle of community focus and value creation. We'll continue our legacies with a focus on serving patients' healthcare needs and creating value while pursuing the highest standard of patient care outcomes. A third principle of exceptional quality and innovative transformation. We're gonna be focused on delivering high quality, accessible patient care and it'll continue to be a top priority supported by innovation. And finally, a fourth principle around disciplined execution. We'll work to execute our plans purposefully, like we've demonstrated through our recently announced quaternary partnership and joint venture. To prioritize the needs of our patients and communities and so that decisions actually remain local, we've agreed on a set of shared governance principles and a governance structure that would bring the best thinking and oversight to the combined organization. With that, to hear more, I'm gonna turn it over to Jackie Frederick, Chair of the Theta Care Board of Directors and retired President and CEO of Versity and the Blood Center of Wisconsin to share more. Thank Jackie. Thank you, Jim, so much. And I want to extend my thanks to you and your board for the leadership and trust you have exhibited. Um, you've lived those guiding principles and thank you. This is such an important day for the lives of our organizations moving forward. We have a thoughtful and compelling, even impactful vision for what we think we can build together for Wisconsin. 
as Jim just shared with you, we're committed to moving forward with a shared governance structure, with a parent board comprised of representatives from both of our organizations. This board has two very important tasks. One is to represent the collective interests of the entire health system, prioritizing the needs of patients and our communities as number one, and to ensure the combined organization achieves its collective goals and is accountable to you in all of our communities. While we are proud of our outstanding record of providing exceptional patient care through our excellent staff, physicians, and clinicians, it is our aligned mission, vision, and cultures that will be the bedrock of our success going forward. For all of you, we want to be your proactive partner in health. We will work to enhance convenient access to high quality care, and as Kathy says, meeting the patient where they are cared for. Our vision is to help the people of Wisconsin live their better lives. Kathy, anything to add? Yeah, thank you, Jackie. We're confident that this health system that we're building together with ThetaCare will allow us to realize our vision of the future of local healthcare. And we're so excited about the bright future that we'll work on together. And together with Freighted, uh, we are perfectly positioned to make a lasting impact, not only on the health, but the health care of the people of Wisconsin. Thank you all very much. All right, thank you, Dr. Ndrabi, Kathy, Dr. Raymond, Jim, and Jackie. Now we'd like to take questions from reporters. If you do have a question, please put those questions in the chat. And if your question should be directed to a specific person on our panel, please add that in there as well. When you are asking a question, if you can, please have your name of the organization included with the question. Okay, to start us off, we have a question from Jonathan Kraus. Um, Kathy, Dr. Andrabi, either of you can take this one. Where will corporate headquarters be located? You knew that this question was coming. We knew. Um, so we kind of formed this yesterday. I can tell you for sure it's in Wisconsin. And that's the most important thing. I think that you're hearing that over and over again, that this is a Wisconsin-based, Wisconsin-led organization going forward, and, and we'll figure out the details um, about corporate headquarters later, but most of all, it's gonna be right here in Wisconsin. And Dr. Ndrabi, you can add to it. It's early. Well, you know, um, I, I think the thing to really focus on is why are we coming together? These are two very strong healthcare organizations from Wisconsin, led by people who live and work in Wisconsin, governed by people who live and work in Wisconsin for the people of Wisconsin. The rest is all interesting. <laughs> All right, our next question comes from Lee Pulaski. Um, Kathy, this can be for you as well. In October 2022, when we announced a hospital's creation in Oshkosh and Fond du Lac, I think a question from some of the reporters and media outlets was, is a merger in the future? And at that point, no, it was not. Um, Lee is asking what changed since then? You know, I would say we got to know each other even better, you know, as it went along, you know, as we obviously got to know our organizations quite well um, during the time that we were having those partnership conversations. And, you know, these are two organizations that knew how great we were from the outside, clinical excellence, commitment to community, value-based organizations, reputation for innovation. And as we got to work together on our quaternary agreement with our partners at the medical college, and then our joint venture, we found out just how easy it was to come together and create those partnerships because of how aligned we really were. And so it just became a natural next step where we kind of just continued on, you know, in terms of the conversations. And after that, it, it was just really easy is what uh, Dr. Andrabi and I always see to each other. So I think it was just a continuation of a, con of a conversation um, where things were really easy to work together and let's see more what we could do. I would agree with you, Kathy. I, I think, I can't remember a time where I picked up the phone and called Kathy and said, this is not working out, right? I mean, so that tells us something. And, and we've had the similar relationship with the Medical College of Wisconsin as well. So three great organizations coming together, partnered and working really, really well. Um, so both on the quaternary partnership side, that has worked really well. 
with MCW and Freighted, and then on the micro campuses as well. So those are the kinds of things that you're looking for in terms of the mission, the vision, the values, the principles that Jackie and, and Jim just talked about. Uh, that enable you to see are these the people that you're going to be able to really work with in the long run and creating can create that lasting impact. And I would say we found the right match. Yeah, we did. <laughs> you know, Imran, if I might add, you know, as, as Kathy and Imran and their executive teams were coming together, we also started to spend a little bit of time with between board leadership groups. And we would talk about the values and, and we had guiding principles. But I think as time went on, what we re quickly realized is it's real. And um, it is truly shared values and shared missions. And, um, and with that, you know, the limits are, in, the, the possibilities are limitless. And uh, just very exciting. Awesome. Thank you. Our next question is from Ashley Smart. She is asking if a merger like this is necessary, given how many hospital systems have come together recently. Would you like to take that one, Kathy, and Dr. Andrade? Go ahead. Okay. Um, you know, I would like to say, you know, we don't need to do this. Um, we want to do this because we think it's going to make us better. So when we take a look at other affiliations that are happening in healthcare, all I can comment on is what we see from the outside. And I think what we're creating here and what you hear about the messages on what we want to do about creating value about improving and enhancing the really strong legacies of clinical excellence that we already share, about innovation and the need to transform healthcare, about expanding academic medicine with our partnership with the Medical College of Wisconsin, and continuing that deep community commitment, we believe that's different than what you're hearing in other affiliations that have gone on, and that that's the reason you know that we're coming together. Um, we didn't do this because either one of us um, needs to find another partner. We did this because we think we found the right partner, you know, in terms of alignment and that it's really going to accelerate our ability to continue to move forward. And that's a big difference. Uh, and, and not to take what you just said mm -hmm. lightly at all, because, you know, these are two strong organizations with demonstrated excellence and quality and leadership and community partnership and and academic medicine and community health. And so we are very complementary in terms of what we bring to the table and actually create that, the totality, the holistic view in terms of what we can bring from a value perspective to the people in our community. And then I think about you know um, a partner like the Medical College of Wisconsin and the ability to take the next generations of uh, physicians and providers who potentially come in that pipeline. The research that Dr. Raymond talked about, I mean, it just elevates everything to a whole different level. And to be able to bring that not only to our urban communities and suburban communities, but to our rural communities as well, right? Uh, that's the real magic here uh, in my mind. And, and then when you sprinkle that with people who are like-minded and are looking to do similar things, that just makes it so much uh, of a value proposition to absolutely consider at this time. Could I add just one other thought? Um, I would say patients in our communities are driving change. Patients need to be cared for when they want, how they want, with the best physicians and, and staff. Our communities want their health to be improved. So. To me, it's what the, the people need and are asking for change. Our employers who um, uh, support us. Uh, and I think the ability that we have the best in regional, community health, academic health, and research is going to create new cures, new diagnostics. So I think for us, it's always been about the patient and the community. Reporters, just a reminder, we are taking questions in our chat. We're asking that you also put your affiliate or outlet as well, and we will get to just as many as we can. Our next question comes from Sean Kirkby with Wisconsin Health News. He's asking the size of the system in terms of employees, hospitals, and facilities. 
So I'm going to refer that right back to you. Perfect. Yes, I was going to you say, know, you might not I have all that say, info. That's I always fine. say if I don't have a number, I'm not quoting it. Perfect. And we'll make sure that you can get those statistics. Perfect. So yes, reporters will be receiving a news release immediately following this news conference that will have a lot more information about the details and, and real specifics that we can get into at this point. Perfect. Thank you, Kathy. Our next question is from Nancy with the Business News out of Green Bay. She's asking how we see this impacting rural health care. Dr. Andrabi, I think that's probably a one for you. Yeah, so I would say uh, beautifully well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I, I say that, um, you know, as a family physician um, at Theta Care, we've had a long, long legacy of taking care of our rural communities and our, and our suburban and urban communities that are very different than the communities in Milwaukee and its surrounding areas. And so, as Jackie said, it's about, it's about the people of our community and getting to understand them and know them and their needs and requirements and wants are very different in different geographies. So, I see this as enhancing that care. I see that um, our, our legacy and our uh, commitment to rural health has been tremendous. Uh, we have continued to grow that particular component of our work. And in the innovation work that Freighter does and that we are doing, I, I see that growing further and new ways of potentially creating access in our rural communities. Broadband band may potentially be a part of that. Telehealth could be a part of that. We actually now take our providers into rural communities, into our farms, so that we can sit at the table and talk to people and understand what their needs and requirements are so we can take care of them. And now you connect that all the way up to quaternary care and complex care and academic care and research, and, and we can bring a lot of value back to those communities to be able to further enhance um, their health and well-being. So I, I just see this uh, truly a, a, a beautiful and I use that word uh, intentionally, a uh, way of sort of thinking about what the problem sets are and then how do we solve them as we go forward. Next question is from Alex with Modern Healthcare. He asks, what do you expect from the regulatory review process if there's anything with overlapping geography or really what the process is looking like here? Sure. You know, the, the beauty, I think, of our partnership is, is that we are not overlapping today. So this really is an opportunity for us to continue to expand to treat more people in the state of Wisconsin. You know, that's really what we want to do is to be able to impact more people in the state of Wisconsin with the learnings that both of us have um, from a theta care perspective and a, a freighter health perspective. So I can't really opine on what the regulatory process is going to be, um, but I do know as we start to go into this partnership that we're really talking about bringing organizations together that actually don't overlap today. And I think that's beautiful because that actually helps us be able to share what both of us are great at and take it to more people across the state. Our next question is from Jason Zimmerman with WBAY. Jason asks, will there be a new name? Jim, you want to take it? <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I, you know, I will, t I will take it. You know, okay. uh, there hasn't been a lot of conversation about that subject, but what conversation has occurred has been focused on the proud reputations and legacies of both organizations. And very quickly, we realized that the name Freighter Health and Theta Care are trusted names in our communities. And with, with that said, we need to figure out ways for those names to continue going forward. And there's many ways that can occur, uh, but we really haven't engaged and specifically sorted through that, although those trusted names need to go forward. Okay, we are taking a few more questions. I realize reporters have some questions in the chat. We can always follow up after our news conference if needed. So we'll get to a few more questions here. Our next question does come from Gabriella Mays of with Fox 6. She's asking how many patients this will impact. That, those details, again, may I, be included in our I, news I release. I don't have a number, but a lot, I hope. <laughs> because, you know, as Kathy said, and as Dr. Raymond said as well, that, you know, this is about having a greater impact on the communities we collectively serve. And that collectively serve could be even larger than what we serve today. And so if we can create value 
we are all for it. We are all trying to do this, as has been said many times, for the people of Wisconsin, and I hope we impact a lot of people in a very positive way. Let's expand on that just a bit. Another question from Nancy. She's asking how um, she can see how this will impact Northeast Wisconsin. How will this impact Southern Wisconsin? Sure. You know, again, I think what the reasons behind why this is so attractive to Freighter Health is is that we're going to learn from each other. You know, we have a great, strong partner with an aligned view of where healthcare is today, where it needs to go, and how it needs to change. You know, and we have both developed different ways of approaching that. And I think that what we really hope that this is going to do is transfer that knowledge and help us accelerate because we're going to really take those learnings from each other. So as Dr. Andrabi talked about rural health care, we, of course, have a very urban setting, you know, who we take care of urban and suburban and southeastern Wisconsin across all of southern Wisconsin. Um, we can apply some of those same learnings about how you reach different areas in urban Milwaukee as you do in rural Wisconsin. And again, it's the same approaches. It's not a cookie cutter. It's not the same to treat somebody in urban Milwaukee the way that you do in Brookfield, Wisconsin. And we know that. We go into those communities. We talk to people in those communities. We talk to people in the churches about what are the challenges in terms of how you access health care and many of the different types of tools and ways that you do that that Dr. Andrabi talked about in rural health care can be translated into urban health care and vice versa. So that's what we're really hoping to do is to be able to take these great learnings from two organizations who are really recognized as national leaders in innovation and how do we exchange those ideas and make that apply to whether you're in a rural setting, a suburban setting, or an urban setting. So we're really looking forward um, to bringing that learning and helping accelerate that vision. So there's great value that, that we think that we can continue to develop in southern and southeastern Wisconsin as well. Could I um, just ask John, uh, with the great work and research and uh, quaternary care you're providing, how, do, how will you as the, the medical college and reach out with all that high-level expertise, which comes back to southern Wisconsin and, and uh, eastern Wisconsin. Yeah, thank you, Jackie. I, I think the, the key is um, what both Imran and Kathy have said about learning from each other. Um, we want to integrate the community practitioners that deliver world-class care everywhere in the urban and rural settings with the uh, quaternary care specialists and the research that we have at MCW. And I also want to say what is really beautiful about the relationship is um, we have regional campuses that serve rural Wisconsin as well. And the partnership with ThetaCare is going to allow us to address the workforce maldistribution in the northern part of the state. And that's been something that we really have desired to do for a long time. So it is, um, as everyone has said, it's a beautiful partnership, and we're so honored to be partners with both of these organizations. John, if I could come alongside you and absolutely agree with you there. And it's also a tremendous opportunity for us to uh, educate the next generation of our physicians in a very different sort of mindset and value set as well. Uh, and, you know, to be able to get that breadth of experience um, you know, would be just tremendous because then you are not retraining somebody once you get into the real world, right? I mean, you train in the real world the way you want to, to take care of people in, in our communities in Wisconsin. And, and that's the beauty of being part of a, a academic medical center is that when people come to medical school in Wisconsin and stay in a residency in Wisconsin, the chances of you staying in the state of Wisconsin and taking care of people is over 70%. And that's the continuity. So we talk about, you know, clinical continuity, but there's academic continuity um, that brings a tremendous amount of value to this state and to the people of Wisconsin. Thank you for that. We have time for about one more question. Let's take our final one here. Um, this one is coming from Lexi with Fox 11. She's asking if there will be new employees or people moving within different facilities. We haven't started to really think about that yet. Well, I, I'll, I'll, yes, agreed. And I, I would say that um, if anybody in healthcare today said they will not be new employees, I think they'd be lying to you. Right. So we, we are all looking for talent. And uh, I think 
this is another value of this partnership, and I'm gonna just use the word beautiful again, <laughs> that it enables us to really attract the best talent and retain the best talent in our uh, communities as well. So uh, more to come, obviously, as we go through our process, but I certainly hope that we attract the best of the best to be a part of this organization. Yeah, I'll come along with that also as well, is, is that certainly everything, you know, that Imran said, you know, about being an employer of choice and making this really a place that people want to be, you know, to work in healthcare. We are also hoping that we can attract national talent because you can hear us talking a lot, obviously, about how we want to be the leader in Wisconsin, but there's fresh ideas everywhere across the country. And we really want this to be a place, again, we both have national reputations for clinical quality, for innovation, but we think by coming together that we can attract even more you know, national attention, whether, I mean, the Medical College of Wisconsin already does a phenomenal job on attracting clinical talent. Um, we want, we can hopefully enhance even that, but even more national talent that brings innovation, brings different ideas to our health system. And we think that we can do that by creating uh, this place to learn together here. Thank you so much. All right, thank you for joining us this morning. We will be sending that full news release to media outlets shortly. Theta Care and Freighter Health are committed to keeping you informed and we'll be sharing updates as things progress. In the meantime, you can visit wicarewiroots.com. This is a site dedicated to the process. Thank you again for joining us.